First we have my Austin. It is an AA50 EC, it's a cutaway acoustic electric, and these strings need to be changed out. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take the old strings off. What helps a lot, guys, is if you get yourself a string winder. Spend some money on a string winder. You can get the cheap plastic ones. A lot of times they're sitting in a jar at a, your local guitar store, music store, whatever. But this guy here that I'm using was about $9.99. And it just makes all the difference in the world to help out. So, the other thing you want to be careful of is, I, mean, I don't know if you see what I'm doing, I'm really unwinding right now, getting the wind up, bringing the string around, and just pulling it out. And the reason I'm able to kind of pull it out is because I do not tie the string in a knot. Ladies and gentlemen, do not tie your strings in a knot. It doesn't do a bit of good. It's a hassle to take your strings off when you're doing it. And you will also take chances of poking yourself in the fan. But you can get one of these. I actually got this for free. Uh, but a lot of people will get one of these little wire cutters. Just be careful. You do not squeeze. You just come slightly under just a slight little pinch. Just a little lift. These guys can sometimes get stuck. Just a little lift. And we're just going to go right on down the line here. If you notice, I'm not squeezing it. Sometimes you can come inside. You can feel the end pin and pull up. On this guitar here, this is a cutaway acoustic electric. So even if you have your hand in here and you're pushing up on the end pin, if you feel the need to do that, like let's say this guy is tight and usually your low E will be tight. Pull it up, pull it up. Right next to that low E, there'll be the wire and your piezo, which is directly under your saddle. And there'll be a wire going down there. Don't accidentally grab that wire, break that wire, otherwise you'll have to replace the piezo. Piezo, by the way, is your pickup for your acoustic electric guitar. Throw your string away, just as I did. Now, this is where we all get into cleaning. Going to clean this fret, these frets up. As time goes, I don't know if you can see or not, but as time goes, these frets, you know, they get a little tarnished, they get greasy, they get, you know, burger grease on them, whatever you've been doing, sweat and stuff like that. So you want to clean the frets off. Sometimes they get burrs, what have you. I use this is this is like double up. Uh, steel wool or you can go ahead and even just a little scrubby you know you get your screen scrubby get yourself a little piece of green scrubby or something like that if you don't like the steel wool this works better to polish it up a little double lot on the steel wool versus this this one you know again it's one of those that you can order online you can get it from Stumac or you can also this was basically or not one of those real thin you know yard sale for sale signs that I just cut and fashioned my own if you want to be economical about it several ways you can make fretboard protector when you're polishing up your frets now I want you to uh, do a couple of them and uh, we'll do a close up, come in and you can see the difference. You can see that we, you know, just in cleaning up and then the difference of it. So what you can see, you see is how it's kind of all got shinied up here. These are still the old ones. 
I don't know if the camera will show it or not, but for those of you who play a lot, you can also see where the frets have some, like there's a, a dent indentation or whatever. That's just from a lot of play, a lot of wear, and as those get deeper, you will start getting fret buzz, and that's when you may need either a fret dress or even a replacement of a fret. Placing frets on a guitar does not decrease the value of the guitar. It's like changing tires on a car. Some people, you know, they like to put as close as possible to what was on the original guitar. If somebody has an old Martin or Gibson or something, or Taylor or what have you. Others want to try higher, lower, wider, you know, but it doesn't change the value. throw that in there you know just because I'm getting ready to spray along here and depending on how grody the guitar is this is for the fretboard again I am using the method for good clean you know what is it uh, if your woodchuck could chuck wood Back in the day, they uh, they actually liked to eat greasy food, and they didn't mind the grease on their fingers. They said it helped. Okay. By the way, if you're going to use paper towels, here at Rock Rescue Guitar Works, we use only the best. We use Bounty. There's a reason. Uh, <laughs> versus, got some pretty good, I don't know, what do you say, good texture to it, so it helps with the cleaning. And secondly, it is actually By a the way, durable towel. Let's talk about this. Do you see what I did? Hey, you're cleaning the guitar. You flipped your guitar over. Your saddle just fell out. You're like, oh my gosh. Which way does this go in? Well, sometimes, you see how dark it is on the front? That's staining from the bridge there, okay? So let's just say that that's the front. There's a reason why this is the front. When that's in there, string pressure pushes forward. And so as time goes, it marks it there. The other thing you can do, and just to make sure that doesn't happen, take a pencil, come along here and mark it. If you happen to have one of these compensated saddles, B and E will always be away from you. In other words, they're gonna be on that side. B away from me, okay? That direction. But anyway, or the other thing you can do is take a picture of everything you do before you get started. <laughs> That's another one, you know, in today's technology that we have. This is regular old Old English uh, lemon oil. Also remember something too. Lemon oil is acidic. I'll just spray on here. I'm just I put it in my own spray bottle, you know, just lemon oil is acidic. So you're in essence as I'm wiping the lemon oil on and I go back and forth and around it's almost like I'm re-wiping it again, okay two things one you know I cleaned out I cleaned the fretboard off I got old grease and rime and grit and PBJ uh, off of there but uh also opened up the pores a little bit and so I'm kind of pushing some lemon oil in doing some rehydrating again um, Depending on what I'm doing, certain guitars, I will, on certain guitars, I'll let let it sit there, 
and let it really soak in for a little bit. But if I got a rush job, person, you know, hey man, you know, I need a back and I'm just doing a very simple restring job, then what I do is I, you know, I wipe it down good, it pushes in good, it's re-cleaning, and then I'll grab, toss that, grab another piece of towel, and I'll wipe the access off. Now, again, as we come along and do this, and you go, and I'm just going to show you something here. So you're going along, and whoops, your nut just came off. You just knocked your nut off. It's laying there, okay, what have you. You're like, oh my gosh, you're in panic mode now. You just knocked your nut off. Well, if you're lucky enough, and it's nice and clean as it is in here, you can put it back on. But what am I going to do to put it back on? Well, let's look and see. If we don't have any glue residue, or what have you, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and let's just get some sandpaper. You see this here? Here's some glue on here. Just cleaning it off, evening it out. In fact, it's still even stained, but I'm just rubbing my Another hand thing on it. What you can do is get a little bit of goof off, okay? And if you have some kind of a chisel or you, you know, you're just gonna come along and you're just gonna get the glue off. Do not dig into the wood. And then what are you gonna do next? Well, wood glue not super glue if you got some Elmer's wood glue laying around the house that's fine do that and just a little dab will do you okay and there's a reason why you want to glue this back on again and the reason you want to glue this back on again is because if you try to start restraining this you're gonna it's, it's a pain in the butt Start with your high E, which is a thinner string, gotta keep it real loose, and you go to the low E, yada yada yada. We're not gonna talk about that mess. Anyway, and as far as how does the nut go back on? Well, you know, that's easy enough. Don't even, you know, <laughs> it's not like the saddle. So we're gonna put it back in place, make sure it's even. Alright, let's look at this end pin here has a little bit of a slant. Actually, you know what? Here's one I'm currently working on. Let's see. Well, I'm going to have to do that. Some more. All right, what's the deal? The deal is this. You see how you, when you buy new end pins or even on this, you see how it's not quite, it's kind of squared when you get new ones, especially when you get plastic ones, okay? As you're putting the strings in, it keeps the ball of strings the ball it makes it harder for the ball to come up and around where the winding can come up to here to where it needs to be you want you don't want your winding all the way down you want your winding resting here I just put a little better angle on it kind of clean up the little burrs here you know can we see the difference now see the difference get in the light. let's get her in the light here I got my director telling me to get it into the light see yeah, yeah and it looks like i'm gonna have to do that to all of them so well, let me just do that to all of them what i do is i lay the ball right there at the top i take the point of the end pin i set it right on top of the ball and i shove them in together and i don't know if you can see or if mr cameraman come around but it goes inside that there's that little groove there okay all the end pins have them yeah. okay and shove it in okay do a little pull up on it okay a little pull. all right all right how do i know how much string how do i know how much of a wind to do you see how i got the string taut you see how i just pulled it through on the low e string resting inside the nut okay and I have taken it to the first tuning machine here. All right, I'm gonna just pull this up and out of the way. And now I'm gonna bring it in. You want your wraps to go down, not up. No, okay, you want it to go down towards the headstock. How many wraps should I have, Robin? Well, two. This has got a nice two wraps. If you got two, you don't want too many wraps. You don't want those wraps going all the way down there. So 
at about that length that I showed you pull it back like I said the other thing is, is you also want to have your wraps going inside to the outside okay in other words you want this string on the inside the next one inside 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 if you happen to have the wrap goes up you see how this downward you got to pivot you got it going down if you have it going straight out you're going to have horrible intonation problems and or as you strum as you strum it'll pop out of the nut depending on how low it sits in the nut I then go in and I cut my string okay strings already committed it's already in there also get yourself a nice tuner this is another thing get yourself a nice tuner okay clip on tuner this is a snark you can get them 15 bucks or you can get them on sale on Amazon if you got Amazon Prime or something like that gonna tune this up to E all right how do I how do I know that with the snark okay all right and that's how I know I'm there okay now wow hear an awful lot of buzzing we're not worrying about that right now but you hear all that buzzing and stuff I want you to think about something this guitar is nice and straight the string is laying flat but with each string that you tune to pitch you're going to start putting a little more relief in the neck so don't put on your first one or two or three strings here hear it buzzing and think you have a problem you don't have a problem yet grabbing it right there I'm the next tuning machine ahead from where I went in okay pulling it back wrapping it around the top the top yank that up and out of the way holding it and by the way folks when you're holding it don't push down on your headstock otherwise you will have nice little lines I am NOT touching that headstock okay watch how that wine goes in and again on the so for your low E your A string your D string and your G string on an acoustic guitar what's happening as you keep hearing it what you got going is you've got the string just pulling up to where it needs to be as the tension's coming all right I want you guys to remember something remember how this we tuned it to pitch at the E right all right Want to know what just happened? Want to know why that says D and not E? Because we're starting to pull up. We're starting to pull some relief on that neck. Just overshot it a little bit. Okay. Alrighty, where do I set the rest of my strings? All right, now for your unwound strings. All right, D and E. This is where we're going to do just a little bit more of a wrap. And the reason being is they're unwound. They're slick. And so you want a couple extra wraps versus the wound ones, where the wound ones kind of lock into each other because of the wind on, on the strings. So it's not a big deal on how you do that or how you get a couple more winds in. But why not just do this? So we're bringing it through. Here's my B string. So you see, normally I would just go one tuning ahead. Well, you know what? Let's just double it up here. Let's just double it up. All right. So in, and again, do that for do that for your B and E string. Okay. It'll give you about four or five wraps instead of two wraps. And that's more than enough. I also want you to notice that I have not tied one single knot. I don't have anything locking in. I've got the strings compressing against the 
tail sticking out. And finally, we're going to get to the E string. Now, this is an 11 gauge. <laughs> uh, they tend to break. You know, they can break as far as, like, you know, if you're not stringing it upright, but generally not a problem. And electric guitars with 9 gauges and 10 gauges, that's where you want to be careful how you, you know, wind it and stuff. All right. So the same thing with this high E string as with the D string. If you look and you see on the snark, the E went down. In fact, the E went down about a half step. G, got to bring it up, or the A, got to bring it up. D kind of went down. And it's all because of the way you're putting tension on the neck. Watch this, you come back to this E again because you put more tension on it, look how it went down again. Okay? We're on the high side. Now, one last thing that I do and then retune again. I take my finger, just my finger, I come up and I just do a little lift. What am I doing? I also do like a karate chop across the end of it. You see how I got just laying on it? I'm stretching the strings out. First of all, it ensures that you see how by stretching the strings out and they actually help bring that wind up further. Anything that might be loose, so I'm stretching again. Also, it just saves from constantly having to tune it. Once those strings are stretched out, you'll find that your guitar stays in better shape. I've been doing this for a long time. You see me going back and forth. And again, only a finger width's height, not too much. Now, I'll usually go under both B and E, and you go real easy, guys. Real easy. You can slice your fingers, okay? I just kind of do a little pull. But I go under both B and E because it keeps me from really slipping it back and forth fast and it's kind of safe on my fingers. So, and of course in stretching the strings out, you know, you see how much we how many steps we brought that down. usually don't stretch that much but and you're always gonna come back come back to your E and your A. And the other thing, just to let you know I brought it all up, but then when you want to get absolutely perfect tuning to it, so take it, pick it up, you leave your tuner on and you tune it in playing position. When you tune in playing position, now you're going to have the real true tune. Take a look at this. Taking off, the neck is close. This is what we need to get her done, but take a look at this. Look how it's a little bit higher. Okay? So you got just a little bit higher. So. And so you just bring it down, you know, you just tune it in the end when you get where you want to be, tune your guitar. Well, guys, that's it. Um, by the way, I don't know if I told you all or not, I'm not the best player in the world, but, but I do have a GDC now. Well, that's how you do it. Thank you for watching.